Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So, <laughs> last Friday, right? Last Friday, we had what we wanted, right? We got what we wanted. And when we talk about stocks coming out of ranges, uh, indexes coming out of ranges from the macro good or the macro clarity, this is exactly what we were talking about Friday, actually all of last week because we were trapped in this ugly, ugly rotation, right? This kind of ugly distribution channel. And Friday, because of the big 300 point rally, we finally got above, right? Everything was good, food tasted better, you got better looking, you got taller, uh, Twitter gave you an extra, uh, some extra money in your, in your account, right? Everything was good, right? Everything was good, okay. 24 hours later, 24 hours later, a trading session comes along, and now we are in the mindset going into this week, right? It's bullish, it's bullish, it's bullish. There is no macro news that's going to stop this bullish train. The market finally got above supply. All we need to do is just build over the supply, and everything is all good. And everything was good, right? We woke up this morning, uh, futures were down a little bit, which was fine. Again, at the end of the day, could we had a structural inside day? And again, you could make an argument. We did have an inside day today, right? Okay. Uh, we had a 300 point move in the Dow on Friday uh, that pretty much got us flat on the indexes for the week. Today, the Dow was roughly down about 100. Okay. So again, the bull case scenario could turn around and say, ah, what's the big deal, right? We're down 100 points today. Not a big deal, right? We're up 300. It's an inside day that's bullish. It's constructive. Stocks are taking a rest. It's all good. What's the problem? There is no problem, right? There is no problem. When you're a professional trader, you always play devil's advocate, okay? You, you, you don't sit there with rose-colored glasses and you're hoping and believing and making believing the information in front of you doesn't matter. Everything matters. Like, it's like, for example, if somebody asks me, hey, Dan, do you use pre-market and aftermarket data. Absolutely, because there's just more data that I'm collecting. So everything that I see throughout the course of the day, the news, how the market handles, handles the news, all that good stuff, it's all information that I use to figure out where my next safest bet is. And when you look at the news on Friday, right, and you look at the news on Friday, you had great economic numbers, the market is all-time highs, everything is great, we're going to go higher, everything's the best, right? We woke up this morning, I looked, I said, wow, Tesla looks great, which it was. I mean, ironically, if it wasn't for Tesla today, I'd be in a much more, I can't believe the market did absolutely nothing mode, but Tesla's Tesla and knock on wood for good things. But other than that, if you looked at pre-market, especially the morning strategy we had today, we were looking at this, we were looking at that. Everything, you know, everything was gonna trigger and everything was gonna confirm because the market finally got above supply and the market got above supply and it was good and it was great and it was good and it was great and it was good and it was wonderful and it was good, it was great, it sucked. Oh my God, what the hell happened? We went back, right, for the three, four, five days that we were trying to get above the supply, we fell back into it just like that, right? Just like that. And if you look at the action today, right, what started out very, very strong, you had very, very aggressive candles, right? You had very aggressive candles in Facebook, they had all over the place. 20750 calls are coming in, 210 calls. Everything was good. Shop looked like it was going to be up a thousand today, right? Shop was going to be up a thousand today. Nvidia, I was waiting for that confirmation. I'm like such a good little boy. I was waiting for it, waiting for it. I go, oh, this is going to be such a high value day. Even Netflix, even Netflix. There was a pivot in Netflix uh, that we had in the webinar, right? 310. I go, hey, it should get to 1150 in seconds. It should get there. And it got there. Everything was all good, right? Everything was good. Tesla was great, right? We talked about Tesla and nausea, 339. We'll get the 341.50, 341.50. We'll get the 344 and a half. It's all good, right? It's all good. It's all good until it's not. And the moral of the story is very simple, okay? At times you have a plan. At times you execute your plan. Sometimes you will miss your plan. But what happens next, okay, 
is always on the trader's psyche. Like what happens next? Like what happens if the plan doesn't play out like we see? What do you do, right? What do you do? And the most important part is how the market always closes, okay? It's never how it opens, it's always how it closes because again, we start getting more clues. And the moral of the story is, the bulls are really doing a crappy job of making this Santa Claus rally a reality. Okay, now you can make a case, right? You can make a case, we already had that rally, right? Dan, what are you talking about? Look at the move, the market is up. What's the difference if we have a Santa Claus rally? It really does not make this difference. You're absolutely right. Anybody who's thinking that is exactly right. We're stones throw away from 52 week highs, all time highs. What's the difference if we rally into the market? right? And into the end of the year. What's the difference? Okay. Is it, is it going to really matter to us that much? We had a phenomenal year in the stock market, all time highs, jobs are great, no recession, everybody's great, right? But if you're trading on a day-to-day -day basis and you're an active participant, especially in the intraday ranks, if you're a swing trader, God bless, it's a, it's a whole different conversation. But if you are an active market participant every single day, it matters. All these pieces of information matters because if it took four days to get out of a channel and it took one hour to go back into that channel, well, we have a problem, right? We have a problem. So last week when I was literally, I mean, and again, we surprisingly last week, we caught some pretty good value on the market that was contracting. So does it really scare me going into tomorrow's session knowing we're kind of in the same scenario that we were right here than we are going into tomorrow? Probably not. Again, you're still gonna wait for your value. And again, there are some stocks on a good news kind of basis that are setting up to the downside, like your Amazons and your Netflix and your Ubers of the world and your BYNDs of the world. So there's things to do, okay? Don't get me wrong. But what I think the biggest problem is Today could have really set the tone, really, really set the tone. And if that second bar would have bought, gotten bought and we would have confirmed and closed above 206, we would have had a very aggressive, fierce market rally for the end of the week. And now we're not going to happen, right? It's just not going to happen. At least the hype, the probability, right? Unless the market reclaims supply again tomorrow and starts building back over 204 and 205, that's a whole different story. Is that possible? Anything's possible. This is the stock market. Anything literally that you can imagine that you think is impossible, you're wrong. Anything could happen in the market. And the most, um, uh, the most encouraging thing about a market doing the complete opposite of what you think is going to do, okay, the encouraging part is at least we're in control, right? At least we're not going into tomorrow's session, you know, depressed, um, losing control, losing interest with some FOMO in the air. We know exactly what's in front of us. And the, mo and the more important part of when you're in control of your trading, okay, it doesn't make a difference if you're trading one stock a day, three stocks, or 30 stocks a day. It doesn't make a difference. As long as you are in control and you're able to control the risk and identify the market sentiment that's in front of you, okay, there are no surprises, right? There are no surprises. Like, I'm not going into tomorrow's session to go, man, we could have some magnificent ranges. Maybe we could, right? If Netflix confirms down, if Amazon confirms down, right? We could, okay, we could. But based on what we saw last week, right, on the same scenario, again, how do you not just go into scalp mode for tomorrow's session, look for some value, take some cash flow, use break even as you stop, Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until we either lose the bottom of the range or we start reclaiming the top of the range again. Again, and unfortunately, that's the area where we are against. So when you go into tomorrow's session, you have ex no expectations, right? You have no expectations. That means you have no disappointments. And again, we don't trade because we are junkies or we are, you know, gamblers. We trade because there is value. And again, you can close your eyes and make believe nothing of this is happening. And you can wake up tomorrow and chase some $3 stock that's up 950% and make six cents and run around the internet how fabulous everything is. Or you're going to be adult about it, right? You can wait for value, kind of get some more clarity and make sure you are trading properly. That's the name of the game. It's not about, you know, it's not about the trading day tomorrow. It's about what you're doing today to put yourself in the future that you are whole, that you are solvent. That's the name of the game. Right. So if you look at today's day, it could have been good. It could have been really, really good. Right. So this was the trade. I mean, I, you know, this is the trade and, you know, it turned out good. You know, it turned out good 
Um, it turned out good. I mean, here is, you know, 339 monster area on Netflix, uh, excuse me, on Tesla. That was the number, right? That was the number. Um, and again, here it is, 339 monster area needs to build, 341.50 next Right, next potential, it hit 341.50. Anything over 341.50, it goes to 344.50, right? If you look at Tesla, it was nothing wrong, right? It actually traded perfectly. I was happy with the trade, right? Here's the 339, and it went to 341, right? 341 and a half, which, which was again, which is the 50 day, which is uh, the supply zone here. And I said, if it could reclaim, right, it could go to right here, which is 344.50. Uh, and look at the high today, 344.50. Da, 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 da. Magic, right? Technical analysis. And again, other than that, that's it. That was the end. That was literally the end of the day. We were just waiting. I was waiting for NVIDIA to confirm, never confirmed. I was waiting for Uber, excuse me, not Uber. I was waiting for uh, Goldman Sachs, right? One hit wonder, baby, right? One hit wonder on Friday. I love that Goldman Sachs pivot above 225. It didn't smell anything next to the 25. Uh, Amazon, I still like for tomorrow. Didn't quite get there today, but again, 1740. That looks good for tomorrow. I was looking for uh, Roku to the downside. And again, Roku did completely the opposite of what I thought I was going to do today. It went up, never got there. Uh, Uber, again, if you're still short Uber, uh, you know, it's just going lower. You know, it's just going lower. Um, Right, it's just going to trickle down lower. Uh, it closed below that uh, 2780 level. Uh, you know, can it get to 2670s? I, I guess it could. Right? Does it, does it thrill me? Does it put really light a fire under me? <sighs> no, uh, not, really not my thing. Uh, Apple never got up there. Obviously, Apple got the really really aggressive pull. And again, when you don't think people know something, again, there was a million dollar bet on Apple intraday for the 265 uh, 265 puts. Stock collapsed three, four dollars right away. Somebody always knows something. Uh, Lulu made it back to that 233.50, never confirmed. Adobe made it back to that 310.50 area, never confirmed. Right? You kind of get the point, right? You kind of get the point. But in the video I was waiting, right? It looked great. 213.70, 214 needs to build, right? So here was NVIDIA. 213.70 needs to build. Um, you know, I was waiting for that confirmation. I'm Still waiting for it, right? I'm still waiting for it. Um, I'm still waiting for it, right? And again, that was the, the theme. You were thinking you have a premium day. It was setting up to be a premium day. It was all good, right? Technically, sentiment, macro, everything. And everything died on the vine. Just like that. So again, you can moan and bitch and cry and moan and bitch and cry about it. Or you can just take it like an adult. It's a sign of maturity to understand process information and make your next move, right? Make your next logical move. Again, sitting and kind of thinking about, well, Facebook went up today. Uh, okay, that's great. The video went up today. Okay, at one point, yeah, that's great. Tesla, you know, again, if Tesla would have closed at 343, right? It would have been good. Tesla closed at 340, 339. So everything got skewed. That The worst thing that could happen today was that everything went back into their ranges. The only good part about stocks going back to the ranges, the weaker names, okay, and we all know what the weaker names were going back to last week, right? The weaker names are now going to start to set up. So again, going into tomorrow, right? Got to be a little sell bias until the market proves it could shake off whatever the hell uh, of the little flu it had today. And the more important part is stock prices need to start reclaiming their supply. If that doesn't happen, you have to start looking at weaker names. Again, we don't care which way we want to trade, but God darn it, man, give us a bias, right? Give us a bias. Don't start giving us mixed signals. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like sitting there. It's like sitting there on a first date and uh, your, your lady friend is rubbing your leg and all of a sudden turns around and say, I'm not that type of girl. Okay. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But again, we'd like a little bit more of a clear, you know, clear signal. So going into tomorrow, flip a coin. I have no idea. I will start looking at the sell side a little bit more. Um, you know, I like Amazon. I mean, Amazon just, just can't rally, just cannot rally. Um, and this is kind of what we want to start off the day, uh, start off the evening here. Uh, 1740 held several times, right? 1740, 1740. If it starts building below 1740, could it get down to the 1720 level, right? The bottom of this channel here. I, it could, right? It could, especially if they stole it start really hammering this thing, it could. So I like uh, I like Amazon below uh, 1740. Um, I like Netflix, if it starts losing- Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. 
you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.